Hey, uh, Spectre Fox here. I just, this is my second time doing this because first time I, uh, um, well, to be honest, I thought I was recording and I wasn't, so. But yeah, I forgot I did a poll on Furry Mino, which was me asking people, you know, if they wanted me to show off part of my backstory. So that's what I'm doing now. Well, uh, this is also, I'm going to read it off, but this also has some of my cousin's backstory in it too, which is, uh, Bubbles Fox, also on the Mino, Furry Mino. Say hi. Waving's not saying hi. Say hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> anyways, I got her to say hi. Anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and read this off. Of course, I put it in small lettering, and I'm blind, as you can see, or close to it. Uh, okay, let's start. Far off in a world much like our own lives a large community known as Ferocia, which lives many anthropomorphic animals much like our own selves. Although it was a abnormal community, they thrived. But this story is about... It ain't about Ferocia. It's about a small fox creature known as Spectre D. And his friend Bubbles and their journey into the world of humans. So, let's begin from the beginning. Let's start with young Spectra, only seven years old, sneaking in to his parents' laboratory. And first, let me tell you guys real quick. In the commune, in the government plant, you know, the plant that they live in right now, um, uh, the government is, you know, you can't explore, you can't do anything dealing with space. Or, it's illegal. Yeah, it's very illegal. They'll shoot you off into deep space if you do that or kill you one. Anyways, I'll keep going. Um, only seven years old, sneaking into his parents' laboratory. Mama, mama, look at what I made. Spectra showing off his toy potato gun. His mother smiled and yelled, <clears throat> Spectra, stop, wait. Spectra slipping on a wet floor, crashing his head into a machine. All of a sudden, the machine malfunctions, shocking young Spectra on top of the head and surging through him into the wad or below. His mother yelled, no, as Spectra's father rushed to the rescue, turning off the power. He quickly picked up Spectra's lifeless-looking body and rushed him to the hospital, telling the surgeons all that had happened. Being so badly injured, Spectra had to be put into a full body cast with leg and arms stringed up. Once the government heard about the parents' lab and what had happened, they were coming to see Spectra's parents for breaking the only rule, trying to explore land unlike their own. Spectra looked on defenselessly, seeing... It gets kind of dark here. Uh, seeing his father trying to fight them off, but dying in the process. Screaming, no, not in front of my son. Just please, not in front of my son. Spectra's eyes wide and hearing a bang ring out. Seeing his father hit the ground bleeding. I'm sorry, it's so mean. Alright. On his cast... Or, or no, sorry. Uh, seeing his father hit the ground bleeding and his mother screaming in sorrow, being dragged off to the shooting pods where his mother would be shot into deep space with no way of return. With blood on his cast and with no way to move, cry, or talk, he sees... His mother getting shot in a pod, waving by to him through the window. 
with tears rolling down his amber-colored eyes. By the way, I need to change his eye color. He hears the doctor tell the soldier, Well, what are we going to do with the kid? The soldier replied, Wait till he heals, then put him in foster care. That's one less brat we don't have to worry about. The soldier laughs, hearing Spectra trying to scream at him, but not able to mutter a single word. <clears throat> Five years later, he's all healed and has been in foster care for four and a half years because no one wanted to have a sorrow-broken kid until one day when he... Matt Bubbles' family. Finally, someone willing to love me and help me, said Spectra under his breath. Part 2, Bubbles' Backstory. And hopefully the video don't cough off by now because my, I have a bad memory on my phone. If so, I would do a second video, which will fix it. <laughs> Alright, let's start. Alright, this is Bubbles' Backstory, and then it connects with mine, and then I'm going to have to start writing more. <laughs> Bubbles, seven years old, playing with her older sister, who was three, older or who was three years older than her. She looked up to her big sister like an idol, even though she, sorry, <laughs> even though she was sometimes bold and make them both get in tr trouble. She'd always make it right in the end, though. One day, Bubbles and her older sister, Moondust, was just hanging out like normal. And Moondust started testing the limits, saying, I bet I can go find new species and bring them back here to show everyone. Ha ha, I bet that would really make the government mad. In a shaky, nervous voice, Bubbles replied, don't say stuff like that. They could hear us. Moondust sat back laughing, saying, They're not going to do anything. They're just a bunch of cowards. Ten minutes <clears throat> later, three men bra broke in through the back gate, two of them grabbing Moondust and the other one grabbing Bubbles before she could do anything. Moondust broke one arm free and elbowed one of the guys in the gut. The guy fell and said, you little brat, slapping Moondust, knocking her unconscious. Bubbles screaming, no. See her, seeing her beloved sister dragged to the shooting pod. The last thing she she see was her sister hanging or banging on the glass as the pod was flying away. Bubbles fell to her knees crying at the la as the last soldier turned to her and said, Let this be a lesson to those who mess with the government. As a walk, as he walked away, mm, sorry, I haven't got much sleep. My eyes are messing with me. As he walked away, Bubbles could hear his demented laughter. Five years later, to the adoption of Spectra, Bubbles and Bubbles and her parents were at the house. At her parent, <laughs> and her parents were got to thinking about adoption. Uh, all right, got to thinking about adoption. They asked Bubbles what she thought of it. Bubbles replied in a sad, minuscule voice, "What if it happens again?" We won't let it happen again, we promise, said Bubbles' parents, replied, okay, Bubbles replied, 
Okay. 30 minutes later, they arrived at the orphanage. They went to in and Bubbles mom turned to her and smiled saying why don't you go meet with the kids and find one you like bubbles replied saying okay mama as she walked into the room where the kids played bubbles thought to herself how will i find the right brother or sister how will i know which one's right she looked around the room seeing everyone playing but one, a small boy in the corner called Spectra. Bubbles walked over to him, seeing him crying. She said in a concerning voice, Why are you crying? Spectra replied in a sad voice, Because I have no family. No one loves me. Then he continued, crying. Bubbles said in a sad sounding voice, Oh, that's so sad. Bubbles changed to a positive sounding voice, saying, Well, you're going to have one now, grabbing his arm and dragging him to her parents. She said with a... <clears throat> One sec, I lost my place. 